President Joe Biden told Ukraine Wednesday, you're not alone in this fight, as he launched a declaration of support for Ukraine's recovery and reconstruction. Speaking in New York on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly, Biden said he had organized a joint declaration of support signed by more than 30 countries aimed at helping Ukraine rebuild and recover economically from Russia's invasion. We're committed to providing Ukraine and the resources it needs to build back stronger was before, Biden said. He appeared on stage with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and other world leaders who signed on to the declaration in a show of support for Ukraine before delivering his remarks. Biden said on Thursday, he'll announce a series of actions to accelerate support for Ukraine's military. While in the US this week, Zelensky has been pitching the White House on what he calls a victory plan for the war, expected to include an ask to use long-range Western weapons to strike Russian targets. For his part, the Ukrainian president thanked the declaration's signatories, saying, it is absolutely justified that those who help us with that now will be the first to benefit together with Ukraine from the large-scale reconstruction. Thank you all my friends. And I am confident life will prevail, Zelensky said. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to Washington. Fellow leaders, friends, 900, for 944 days, Putin has waged his vicious onslaught against Ukraine. For 944 days, Ukraine people have stood unwavering, unbroken, and unbowed. Today, we're launching the Joint Declaration of Support for Ukraine Recovery and Reconstruction to make it clear we stand with Ukraine now and in the future. That starts on the battlefield. I'm determined to ensure that Ukraine has what it needs to prevail and fight for its survival. Tomorrow, I will announce a series of actions to accelerate support for Ukraine's military. But we know Ukraine's future victory is about more than what happens on the battlefield. It's also about what Ukrainians do to make the most of a free and independent future which so many have sacrificed so much. With this declaration, over 30 countries and the European Union have made important commitments. First, as Ukraine continues to make necessary reforms to fight corruption, we're committed to providing Ukraine with the resources it needs to build back stronger than it was before. This war has shown the Ukrainians can do anything they set their minds to. Today, we show the Ukrainians you're not alone. You're not alone in this fight. You're not alone in the reconstruction that comes after. Ukrainian people have fought and died to win a future of freedom and independence. Mr. President, we all, we all stand by your side to help Ukraine make the most of it. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, dear President Biden, dear leaders, dear our friends. I'm grateful to all of you for your unity in protecting lives. And now more than 30 countries and the EU have agreed to the declaration, truly strong declaration focused on rebuilding Ukraine after, after their hostilities. This is a shared commitment to help rebuild Ukraine and support our path to the EU. This reflects our shared vision of life. We protect people and we ensure that people have the opportunities to live. And it is absolutely justified that those who help us with and now will be the first to benefit together with Ukraine from the large-scale reconstruction. Security and prosperity are entirely intertwined, and one cannot exist without the other. Sadly, throughout history, wars have too often shattered the destinies of generations, lasting a few years, but poisoning lives for decades. 
Together we can prevent this now. We must not leave behind ruins that would spread resentment, resentment and bitterness after, after this war. Thank President Biden and all you, France and Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni for their supporting in organizing today's meeting and for their unwavering leadership in protecting our lives. Thank you all, my friends, and I am confident life will prevail. Thank you. Slava Ukraini. A Turkish plane carrying 30 tons of medical aid arrived at Beirut's airport on Wednesday after Israel's massive bombardment of several areas throughout Lebanon that killed at least 560 people and sent thousands fleeing from southern Lebanon. Lebanese caretaker health minister Faras Abayad was at the airport to receive the Turkish aid. He said it was a message of solidarity from Turkey to the Lebanese nation, in the face of the brutal aggression it is enduring. A wave of Israeli strikes on Monday and Tuesday killed at least 560 people, including 50 children and 94 women, and wounded more than 1,800, the Lebanese health ministry said. It was a staggering toll for a country still reeling from the deadly pager and walkie-talkie bombings last week. The airstrikes forces thousands to seek shelter. Fleeing families have flocked to Beirut and the coastal city of Sidon, sleeping in schools turned into shelters, as well as in cars, parks and along the beach. Some sought to leave the country, causing a traffic jam at the border with Syria. اليوم بمطار عم نستقبل طائرة عسكرية جاية للبنان مساعدة من تركيا ومن الشعب التركي لتوجه رسالة كتير مهمة للشعب اللبناني الرسالة الأولى هي رسالة تضامن هي رسالة بتقول للشعب اللبناني أنت لست وحيدا نحن واقفين معك نحن بكل الدعم لصمود هذا الشعب بوجه الاعتداء الغاشم اللي عم يتعرض لإله اللي سقط من جراءه الأعداد الكبيرة من الشهداء ومن ومن الجرح. supplies to support the Lebanese people who are suffering under the Israeli aggression. 